Hey filmmakers, it is Carrie with Filmmaker Central, and today I'm answering the question of should you buy the studio version of DaVinci Resolve? And yeah, I think you should. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time. Well, I'm going to get more into it in just a moment. So stay right there. We'll be right back. Now, one of the things that I really, really like about DaVinci Resolve is the free version. And this is why I teach it. This is why I became a certified instructor. This is why we promote it in our retail store. This is, it's the main reason I am such a fan of DaVinci Resolve is the free version. And it, it's always strange in the Facebook groups and forums where people are asking for pirated versions just get the free version. It's most of everything that you want. So it's, it's just that, that's the key selling point is the free version is almost everything that you need with a few exceptions. So we're going to get into that first. How much is it? It's $299 us. So it's the same price as buying final cut pro and it's way cheaper than buying the Adobe subscription at $50 a month, which adds up very, very fast. So if you don't like the subscription model and you only want to pay a few hundred bucks, your choices really are Final Cut Pro. But if you're on a Windows machine, that option goes out the window and you really have DaVinci Resolve. And there's other great products out there. There's Filmora, there's PowerDirector, there's others. And they're good but they're not great. And none of them have all of the features that DaVinci Resolve has. So I'm a huge fan. There's also two ways of purchasing DaVinci Resolve. The activation key, well, actually there's three ways. <laughs> there's the activation key, which is just a, a license code that you put in and make it work. That code can be on two different machines at the same time. So I have my laptop and I have my iMac. I use the same license key, no problem. Now, sometimes I, at my office, I'll fire it up there and put in the license key and then we'll deactivate these. So when I, the next time I use one of these, I have to put the license key back in because I can have two machines active at a time. The other way is to purchase the dongle. That's a USB key that plugs in that will activate the studio license. Now, the, there are two different downloads. There's a free version download and a studio download. You can't install the free version and then plug in the dongle or type in the activation key. You have to download a separate version. So keep that in mind. But if you purchase the dongle, the advantage to that is it also works with the full version of Fusion. Now, while the Fusion that is built into DaVinci Resolve is pretty complete, there are a few things in the full version that you don't get in uh, DaVinci Resolve. So if you really want all of the features and benefits of Fusion, then you might want to look at ordering the dongle key. Now, sometimes those dongles can go for quite a bit less than retail on places like Amazon, I mean, uh, like eBay. And I actually purchased one for $180 instead of $300, which is how I got into the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. There was a, a period where they would allow you to switch to the activation key. I actually did that and I don't need that full version of Fusion, but I did want it to be, I did want to be able to use it on two machines without having to remember to take the USB dongle back and forth because I had left it at work before and it was a 20 mile drive on a weekend. So I, yeah, I'm happier with the activation key. The third way is to get through the um, Apple store, the Apple app store. And now the, the versions have become a lot closer than they were before. There were some really big disadvantages in earlier versions of DaVinci Resolve if you purchased from the app store. Today, it's not that big of a deal. I still recommend just getting either the activation key or the dongle. Because if you get it from the, the Apple store, then you can't run it on a Windows machine. You're, you're, you can only use it on 
a Mac. So if you get the activation key, that key will work on Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. So there's the different versions of it. Uh, so let's talk about the differences between the studio and the free version. And this is this first one is probably one of the most important and it's hardware acceleration and multiple GPUs. So while the free version is pretty darn good, you will find typically, depending on your hardware, that it is faster on the studio version because it supports hardware encoding, graphic processing, uh, the multiple GPUs. So on, like even on my laptop, it doesn't really make any difference. This laptop is a 2016 MacBook Pro. There's really no hardware in here for DaVinci Resolve to support. However, on my iMac, it does have a better video card. So the studio version does run faster on my iMac than it does on my MacBook Pro or it, the studio version runs faster than the free version. On a higher end machine with really good video cards, it can be a significant speed difference. Not that DaVinci Resolve is a slouch on either one of these machines, but faster is always better. The next one is 4K resolution limit, which is kind of a misnomer because you don't get full 4K on the free version. You can do UHD, which is 3840 by 2160, which fortunately for me is fine because like all my drones, that's their highest, well, not my newest ones, but like my DJI products, that's their highest resolution. So I haven't needed to go higher than that. Now with the Autel Evo 2 Pro, I actually can shoot 6K and even 8K on one of the other machines. So I'm now working with much higher resolution footage. Now, even on the free version, I can work with that footage. I can edit the 6K footage, but I can only export the UHD, the 3840 by 2160. If you want the full uh, ultra HD or the highest resolution 4K, you have to have the studio version. Now, is this important? And I'm gonna say no, because the vast majority of people who are consuming your footage are doing it on 1080. So I, you're gonna watch this video in 1080. There's no reason for me to put these videos out in 4K. There just isn't. So the output on there, it, now, if you're working on a big commercial project or you need to output something for Hulu or Netflix, yeah, you better have the studio version so that you can output in the highest resolution. But for the vast majority of people, you're still exporting in 1080, so there's no reason for the higher end version. Now, for a lot of people nowadays, the big reason to go to studio is H.265 accelerated decoding. So like all the DJI drones now support H.265. The GoPro Hero 9 supports H.265. There's a handful of cameras that support H.265. So if you've got a camera and you wanna shoot H.265, you have two choices. You either upgrade to the studio version or you're transcoding that footage before you ingest it into Resolve. So uh, for me, that was a biggie. A lot of my stuff does shoot H.265 in order to get the 10-bit color in D-Log. So I needed to work with 265 footage all the time. It made sense, again, why I would want to go with the studio version. Now, one of the big features that you do not get in the free version is video noise reduction. And the video noise reduction in DaVinci Resolve is actually extremely good. Uh, I think it is on par or better sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes than the, the leading software out there, uh, Neat Video, for example. And Neat Video is expensive. It's, I think it was over $200. So if I'm going to pay $200 for a plugin, why not pay $300 for the full version of Resolve and get excellent video noise reduction? So for me, that was a biggie. 
in version 16, they introduced the neural engine. And, you know, if you read their marketing and hype, it's, uh, I'll read something here. It's cross-platform artificial intelligent to add powerful features. The main purpose of the neural engine is to minimize those time-consuming and repetitive tasks. Some of the features that utilize the neural engine are the speed warp retiming, which can really, really be huge. Uh, if I can take footage and slow it down to like 10% and with speed warp, it looks beautiful. Without it, it's going to be really jumpy, but with speed warp retiming, it is amazing. Out that will destroy my machines. I mean, <laughs> I cannot do that on my laptop without letting that render for even a small clip is going to render for a long, long, long time. On this machine, my iMac, it's not as bad, but it's still really slow. You want a really good machine in order to do speed warp retiming at any reasonable level. Uh, face recognition, I don't use face recognition. Um, I know who I am and I'm the primary subject of almost all of my videos. If I was working with a lot of different people, different actors and things, that might be different. But for me, I, I don't need the face recognition. Object removal, uh, that's a good one. That's a fairly new feature, allowing you to remove an object from a scene, um, kind of like content aware fill type thing. Uh, again, I don't use that. I, I've played around with it, it's kind of cool but not something I personally use, but for some people that can be very important. And auto color and shot match. So those are biggie. Um, I recently just did a video on the auto color and it's pretty amazing these days. With the neural engine, it, it works extremely good. Now there's also a handful of Resolve FX plugins that require the studio version. And unfortunately I don't know where there's a complete list of ones that work with uh, the free version and ones that only work with studio. I know there are pencil sketch, stylized, drop shadow, vignette, chromatic adaption, chromatic aberration, stylized, um, analog damage. There, I, those are a few that I can think of off the top of my head, but I, I know there's a few more that you go to apply it and you'll get an overlay saying you need to upgrade to the studio version. Um, not, maybe not be a, a big deal for some people, but if there's something that you use all the time, uh, you know, that could be a, a setback. Now there's, there's also some high end features, uh, really workflow type things, remote grading, frame.io integration, uh, collaborative work environment, uh, remote rendering. There, there's some of those features. Uh, I think there's also like 3D um, processing. Again, features I don't use, but there's certainly people out there who use that. And for those reasons, you would need to get uh, the studio version. Uh, other things you don't get with the free version, there's no deinterlacing. So if you're working with like 1080i footage in, and you're trying to work with it in 1080p, there's no deinterlacing. You'd have to have the studio version for that. Uh, there's no HDR Dolby Vision. Again, not something I'm too concerned about. Lens correction, that is something that I use because on um, the DJI Mavic 2 Pro, it actually has this barrel uh, distortion that I need to correct when I'm shooting in log. So lens correction for me is actually fairly important. 3D stereoscopic tools, including stereoscopic grading, not something I use, but there's certainly people out there who use that. So that's kind of a good rundown of the, the differences between the free and the studio version. And for most people, it's going to come down to the performance improvement with the studio version because of the hardware that you have, being able to take advantage of higher end hardware. It's going to be features like the video noise reduction and some of the plugins. Those are going to be some of the huge features. The speed warp retiming, excellent. Uh, auto color is excellent. And the H265, that was the other one. I'm kind of going back through my notes here. The H265 
because that is becoming more and more popular every day with different cameras and drones and things that could end up being a biggie for you. There's also um, some issues with some GoPro things that I've seen where you needed to have the studio version. I don't use GoPros myself, so uh, I'm not, I haven't really seen what the issue is there. I think it was the newer ones that shoot H265. And if you're using 265, you need the free or the studio version. Pretty simple. So again, $299 US, $299 US. And think about whether you want the dongle version so that you get the full version of fusion or you want the activation key so you can have it on two machines at the same time for me i went the activation key it fits my workflow better i i don't need the full version of fusion so i hope this helped to help you understand the differences between the free and the studio version of davinci resolve this is based on davinci resolve 16 and um, things are always subject to change in 17 or 18 or 19 whenever those come out so thanks for watching everybody really appreciate it please like share and subscribe really appreciate it and click that bell icon to get notified whenever i put out a new video which is almost every week i'm kind of back in the swing lately i kind of took a hiatus off for a while but i've been cranking out videos lately so subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified with every new video thanks everybody Appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.